Hi friends, this is Ed from the Ed Boston Podcast, and welcome to uh, another edition of the show. We are so pleased to be able to present this interview to you from Jen Lilly, who is an actress, uh, a singer, an author, and just an all-around great Christian woman and example. Uh, Jen and I spoke earlier today, and we just pray that you are inspired uh, and uh, as much as I was by what she had to say. Uh, and if you would, share the link with your friends. And uh, Jen's got a lot of really good things here f uh, for her fans. Uh, you got to listen all the way to the end. It's so special what she does for her fans at the end of this interview. God bless you and enjoy the show. Okay, folks, welcome back to this segment of the Ed Boston Podcast, and we are honored, privileged, and excited about, once again, having Jen Lindley with us on the podcast. Hi, Jen. Hi, Ed. Thank you so much for having me back. Well, it's it's great to hear your voice. We enjoyed you having you the first time, um, but life's changed a little bit since then, hasn't it? Life has completely changed, yes. So tell us a little bit about that. Um, well, as some people may know, it recently leaked that I've left Days of Our Lives, which was a very difficult decision. Um, it took me a long time to decide what to do. And um, now I'm still acting and I'm singing, except right now my singing's on hold because my voice has been all over the place. And um, spending time with family, which is really important to me, and getting involved, uh, getting more involved with the charities that I am on the board of and you know, I'm just kind of taking the time to get back to the basics right now. I know that uh, your fans, a lot of them are go well, mo hopefully most of them uh, <laughs> will be uh, disappointed when that time comes for your character yeah. to be gone. Uh, what have you been telling them? Well, I've been telling them a few things. Um, first, you know, it's not set in stone that I'm – never going to come back. Uh, you can always come back in soaps, which is kind of brilliant and awesome. Um, second, my exit storyline is incredible. I mean, seriously, when they told me the arc of the storyline, I was still nervous because it's such a good arc, and I was just waiting for the dialogue to see if it would match the scale of how great the um, arc of the exit storyline is, and it's amazing. It's so good. It's, like I say in my statement, it'll have people on the edge of their seats. Um, I haven't even told my mom how I leave, so it's pretty awesome. It's not necessarily permanent. Um, and, you know, I'm always working. I work I, I work myself to the bone all the time. So I've already booked something else, but people will always be seeing me. Um, you know, I'm working on a children's book series and then my singing, and then I've got acting stuff up my sleeve. So, you know, I'm not sure if my time on Days of Our Lives is completely finished. And if it is, they'll be able to see me on other things. So hopefully that's a little bit <laughs> softens the blow. Well, that that's great news that there's other Thank ways that we're going to be able to to keep up with you. Uh, I know you're a great person of faith, and you believe in the power of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Uh, how how did that play a role in your decision? I oh know my you, gosh. Your Huge. charity first. Yes. Go ahead. Um, that's such a great question. I appreciate you asking it, Ed. Well, first of all. You know, I signed on originally for two years. I renewed my contract for a year. So it's been a little over three years that I've been on the show. And my entire last 12 months, I was just completely, I mean, honestly, going on insane fast under medical supervision. But, you know, fasting and praying and, and waking up early and reading my Bible and being like, okay, Lord, you know, what's the deal here? And I think as a I hope, you know, some people, they're going to be upset by this, but the truth is, is that I was praying a lot about the role, and, and I think that my life is not my own, and um, even taking the role, I was directed by the Holy Spirit to take the role, it was not something I ever thought I would do, and um, just because the character is so brash, but it's been amazing to see how the Holy Spirit has shaped this character, and how, you know, playing 
this Mary Magdalene esque character has brought so many fans to the Lord and and it's just healed so many broken women who are like Teresa. So that's been cool. But I really felt like, you know, I've reached out to everybody on the cast and crew and I really felt like the Holy Spirit's like, you know what? You've done every single thing that you can do here. You've plowed, you've watered, you've planted. I am going to still keep up with the cast and crew. And I just felt like God said, you know, I have a new chapter for you. And it's terrifying. I'm so afraid of, like, in a lot of ways, I'm afraid in human forms. I'm not anxious, but afraid of what's next because it's, it's bigger than what God's asked me to do. And I know that it's going to take God to open doors for even the music stuff that he's asked me to do. It's, it's kind of terrifying, but awesome because I know God's on my side. So it very much, my faith very much shaped um, my decision. Cause I felt like God was saying, you've done everything you can. You went, you, you did what I asked. Okay. New chapter, new adventure, you know, and of course he only gives you one step at a time, <laughs> you know, well, quite an amazing testimony that people were actually one to the Lord through a character. Oh on my gosh. Opera. So many people, I mean, troves of people went back to church or I've talked to them or people on my cast, um, people on my crew that I've reached for Jesus. It's been insane. It was not something I ever could have anticipated other than God is crazy and he's amazing and he's wondrous and he's infinite, but also even in my exit storyline, I mean, the, God is majorly involved in my exit storyline, which is insane. So I'm looking forward to that in six months. Well, and, and I'm still hung up on you saying God using this Mary Magdalene type character uh, and, mm. and how God can use so many different things in so many different ways to to advance his kingdom. Absolutely, because I think the people that it reached are, you know, it reached everybody across the board. So it reached people in church who, like myself, I've I've totally gone into the church bubble where, you know, because we're human, we do take on the role of judge, <laughs> you know, and I, I'm guilty of that. I'm not saying everybody's guilty of that, but I certainly am because I am a rule follower and I like, you know, if there's like a small subconscious part of me that would judge people. So it speaks to people in that camp where they're like, oh, wait, you know, everybody's broken. And then it speaks to the Teresa's, the girls that are like Teresa or even guys that are like Teresa that are just so broken. And everything they're doing, all the bad decisions they're making, they're motivated by brokenness. And when I took the role, it was because, you know, God said, this is your role. And I said, why, God? And he said, I'm not going to say no, Lord. That's an oxymoron. He's not Lord of my life if I say no. But I am going to ask why, and that's valid. And he said, because – I died for the world when they were yet sinners. That's, you know, in Romans, I died for the Teresa's of the world. I didn't die for somebody that's perfect. If ever, if we were all perfect, we would never need Jesus ever, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's just amazing because I think it reaches the people that are in Teresa's position and saying, Oh, wait a second. There's a God in the universe who loves me. There's a God who has plans for me and they're good. And I have a bright future and I can change my life. And, you know, I can turn around even though I've made terrible decisions. It's like, yeah, it's never too late. So I love that. Well, uh, I'm sure it's great to be spending time with family. Yes. <clears throat> yeah, it's been wonderful. I just saw my brother, my little brother. I haven't seen him in three years, which is terrible. But that's the life of soap acting because he lives on the East Coast. So I just went and visited him, and we were in D.C., and it was hot as all get out with all the humidity, but <laughs> it was awesome. Mm-hmm. And uh, your charitable work that you're doing, you're able to get into that more? Yes. I've, I'm on the board of a charity called Innocent Justice Foundation, and so I was able to go down to the LAPD and work with the FBI and, and get training with them on um, Internet crimes against children, which is child pornography and, and how what they need in order to um, catch perpetrators and, and predators. So I was able to kind of – get my hands dirty, you know, and see how they work and what they need. I know right now, like the LAPD needs two police dogs. So I'm going to work on getting that for them. And then um, I'm probably going to Swaziland in the fall with the thirst project. So that's exciting to go build wells in Africa. Yeah. I'm excited. And you mentioned other acting, anything that you can tell us that that you've been doing or anything? I, I've only been off the show for like three weeks, um, and three of those weeks I didn't have a voice at all. So 
I haven't done too much, but I'm in July. I'm working on a series, but I'm not sure what I'm allowed to say yet about it. <laughs> okay. Um, but it's, it's going to be fun, and it's with people I've worked with before, so that's exciting. And um, you're singing. Uh, you obviously haven't been with the Bad Voice, but uh, what are you looking yeah. there? I am working with an amazing music producer who I'm also not allowed to say who it is, but he's, oh my gosh, top notch, and that's totally the Lord. So, um, yeah, we're writing and releasing a pop-ish album. Um, <laughs> I'm really not allowed to say, like, so sorry, Ed, but I'm not allowed to say too much, but um, but it'll be mainstream radio, and I'm not sure when it will be done because right now we're just waiting on my vocal cords to repair. Um, but God's awesome, and there's no nodules, so I'm just drinking soup and trying to avoid coffee the best I can, but I love coffee, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but, you know, I'm we're writing a lot of music, and it will be uh, with a major label, so that's exciting. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. And... With with so many things in the works that you know you you got to keep to yourself until the exact right time, uh, is it tough on you to well to to do this interview here? Uh, is that you know your fans want to know what's going to yeah. happen? And, and I know that's what the business is. And but you mentioned you hadn't you hadn't even told your mother how the the sh- you end on the show so. How does that work? Yeah. Well, that's just a personal choice. I mean, I could tell my mom, but I'm I'm so excited about how the story is that I don't want to really don't want to spoil it for anybody. I mean, the fact that it even came out, you know, that I was gone already. I was literally in the parking lot when that broke, and um, that was frustrating. Just because I I want everybody to experience it moment by moment, you know, and in the present. But that's not going to happen. So the only thing that I can control is hopefully is the fact that, um, you know, I can't give spoilers for how I leave, but I don't know. <laughs> it's not frustrating. I just wish, you know, I had something that I could tell you, but I can't. Well, the, the leak issue, um, mm-hmm. those kind of things have to be frustrating. Yeah. I think they're frustrating for everybody. That was, um, particularly frustrating because it wasn't from a legitimate press source, but, um, and it was based on the fact that general hospital had called me and asked me to reprise my role of maxi. Um, and I said, no, just because I'm not going to lead general hospital in my, in my opinion, it would undo all that I've done, all the groundwork I've laid at, at days, you know, mm-hmm. loving on those people. If I just went over to another soap, it would be a real slap in the face to days of our lives. So um, basically somehow they found out that I said no to general hospital. And then it was a weak rumor that, um, you know, just got a lot of steam and then, you know, things transpired, but it's good things come to those who wait and God is just and God can redeem anything. So it actually helped me that those inter- that those uh, the press leaked because when my agents were pitching me for other things, <laughs> all the casting directors would be like, "No, yeah, right. She's on Days of Our Lives still. Like, we can't go down this avenue again. She's not available for work." And they said, "Show us, you know, show us an article that proves that she's not on the show." So <laughs> God used it for good, but it was it's just frustrating because I want I still want the you know I I just hate spoilers. Right. Um, I don't even watch movie previews because I hate knowing, you know. Well, and once again, you you work in that God takes things and uses them. For Absolutely. Good. Um, you're such an inspiration. I, I want you to know that. That I, oh I know gosh. that when I uh, we we tweeted back and forth a little bit a couple of weeks ago when we first were talking about this. And, yeah, and, and just several people. When, when's the interview going to be? When's it going to happen? You know, where can we find it? it, it, it you're just people um, seem to be drawn to you, and, and that's 
a gift from God. Uh, that is a gift from God. That is only God. Yeah, definitely. That's completely God. And it's it's a big responsibility too. Yes, that's true. Um, but you know, the good news is that we are. My only responsibility, really, at the end of the day, is just to love people. You know, and love covers a multitude of offenses and sins. So, like, if I just love people, I might not always make the best decision, but, you know, it falls back on love. So, I mean, my fans are incredible, so incredible, and I don't deserve them, and they're just so sweet. And I hope, you know, I'm doing a fan event this weekend in New York, um, in New York with Eric Martzoff, who plays Brady on the show. And my parents are like, oh, how are you going to handle that? It's so much work. And I was like, it's so awesome. It's so awesome because it's so easy to encourage people that want to be there, you know, and I just love encouraging people. That's what I would do all day long if I could. It's just awesome. So I'm excited to see the fans, but, you know, they're the best, man. Well, you, um, again, uh, are an inspiration to to so many. It's very evident. And I'd like to say a word of prayer with you uh, before we we finish. Uh, I want to pray for your, your, your voice. Uh, but I want to pray for the way God uses you and the ability that you have to to draw people to you and the way you use that for God's glory. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Yes. Father God, I, I thank you so much for our friend Jen, and uh, thank you for uh, working in her life in such amazing ways for her to use a a soap opera character to to win souls for you, Father. And uh, what a blessing that is, what an encouragement that is, and uh, what an example to others that whatever it is that they're doing in life, that they can use that for your glory. And just now I lift up my friend's voice to you. She's been three weeks Mm -hmm. with, with problems with her voice. And in the name of Jesus and through your Holy Spirit, I pray that you would heal it and make it whole once again. Because we know the power of prayer and we know that praying in the name of Jesus, we believe that her voice will be healed. And she'll be back singing and acting very, very soon. Yes. Father, we ask that you continue to influence all the things that Jen does in her career and in her personal life, Father, bless her, bless her family, her friends, all those around her that are her support cast, that more souls will be won because of the person that Jen Lily is. Yes. We pray, we pray this all in the holy and precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Can we pray for the listeners really quick? Can I pray First, for the listeners? That'd be wonderful. Okay. Father, I just thank you, first of all, that we can come to you and for who you are, God, that you are infinite love, God, that you are boundless, Father God, and you are unbridled, God. And I just thank you for every single listener, God, that's tuning in. Lord, if they're tuning in just for me, then bless them today, God. And and just I just release the spirit of sonship and adoption over them in Jesus' name. I release destiny over them in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, that your word says that you have plans that are for them, God, that you are for them and not against them, God, that you, that you are our provider, Father, God, that no matter what trials we're going through, God, that you provide a way, that you are faithful and you always show up on time, God, and that you, I just pray for divine appointments, God, right now, and that your Holy Spirit and your ministering angels, Lord, would just go forth to every single listener and that you would just reveal yourself to them in Jesus' name, God, that they would know that you have great plans for them, God, that you love them relentlessly, God. And it doesn't matter what they've done. It doesn't matter what they're going to do, Father God, but nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. So I just pray that each and every one of these listeners would know their worth, would know that the Bible says that they are the apple of your eye, Father God, that you number the hairs on their head, Father, that they are just worth more to you than every single thing, Father God. And I thank you, Lord, that you have slain the that Jesus died before the foundations of the earth were laid, Father God, that you knew that you were going to have to send your son to die for us, God, and you did it anyway. God, I thank you that there is nothing that you won't give us, Lord. 
because you are just relentless, God, that you are a good father. So I just lift up everybody who's listening, Lord, and I ask them to just come to you, Father God, that they would come and taste the living waters of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Father God, and that they would today make him Lord and not just Savior, Father God, but they would make him Lord of their lives, Lord, and that you would just open their eyes and Holy Spirit, that you would just inform their, every time they read scripture, Father God, Holy Spirit, that you would speak to them in Jesus' name. Okay. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. Thank you, Ed. I think for um just being so patient with me. You're so wonderful. Well, and uh we'll do this again as yes. time goes on. We we'll get Trevor and Howie together to work <laughs> on it and uh, we'll do this again down the road. Sounds good. Thanks, Ed. All right. Have a great day, Bye. Jen. Bye. And that was Jen Lilly from Days of Our Lives fame, wonderful Christian lady who uh, has been a a second-time guest on the show. And uh, we love her personality and her her spirit. And uh, it's always a pleasure talking to Jen and looking forward to doing that down in the future. Take care, folks. We'll talk to you again. Check us out at edboston.com. Uh, check us out on social media as well, uh, the Ed Boston Podcast, and go out and do the right thing. God bless you. <laughs>